All right, Pete, I need you to help me. Can of tuna. Pete really loves tuna. And his namesake, Pete Conrad, had tuna on the way to the moon on Apollo 12. But no one liked the tuna as much as Apollo 12's command module pilot, Dick Gordon, apparently. I had a really great conversation with him at Space Fest last weekend about the tuna issue on Apollo 12. So that's what we're going to talk about today on Vintage Space. Just as soon as Pete stops his noisy eating. It's a little bit weird to me that every time I see Dick Gordon at some kind of signing event, he knows me and recognizes me as the girl who always asks him really weird food questions. The very first time I ever met Dick Gordon was in November of 2012 at an Astronaut Scholarship Foundation event. He let me sit on his lap for a picture, but he also thought I was a total weirdo for asking about the sandwich being slipped into Pete Conrad's leg pocket the morning they launched on Apollo 12. I did a video about that sandwich right here, which also explains why my autograph from Dick Gordon says the words no sandwich above his name. Two years ago at Space Fest 6 in Pasadena, I asked Dick Gordon about the bacon squares he stole from Pete Conrad somewhere on the far side of the moon. Yes, this was in the transcript, but he has no memory of the bacon squares. This year at Space Fest in Tucson, I talked to Dick Gordon about tuna. Yes, tuna fish. According to the official Apollo 12 press kit released before launch, rehydratable spoon bowls of tuna salad were part of lunch or meal B on days 1 and 5 for Commander Pete Conrad. Conrad's meal plan was given as a reference and something pretty typical of all the crew's meal plans, being Lunar Module Pilot Al Bean and Command Module Pilot Dick Gordon. The tuna became a bit of an interesting issue for the crew. On the third day of the mission, Dick Gordon apparently had half a pack of tuna left over from the night before, and he radioed down to Mission Control to see if he could eat it. Now, the problem wasn't whether or not he was allowed to finish the meal. Of course, he was allowed to finish his own food packs. The question was really, would it be safe? We've all seen tuna that goes bad when left in the fridge too long. In Apollo 12's pure oxygen environment, it was possible that the tuna would go bad really quickly. Nobody wanted Dick Gordon getting food poisoning right around the time Apollo 12 reached the moon. It was Bean who made the call down to Capcom Don Lind, asking whether or not it would be safe to eat the tuna that was left open. Bean radioed down, Well, Dick has this one in his hot hand and we just opened it last night. You sure that one isn't alright? Lynn passed on from the flight surgeon that it was probably safest to just open a new pack, but he said that he would check. Lynn called back up, We're still checking with some people down here whether there's any problem over that tuna fish, but why don't you hold off eating it until we get a better answer for you? Another 10 minutes passed and Lynn came back online with more thoughts on the tuna problem. You can't imagine what consternation your tuna fish question has raised down here. We have a wide diversity of opinion. Well, we have a vote that it's okay. The majority says throw it away. There's a minority report that says everybody can eat it except Dick Gordon. Ultimately, the decision for Mission Control was that nobody should eat the tuna, and the crew reported that they did not. An hour after this question was first raised, Dick Gordon's wife Barbara came to Mission Control and said she was very pleased to hear that her husband had not eaten potentially bad tuna. Nearly 195,000 miles away from the Earth, this was the question plaguing Apollo 12. When I saw Dick Gordon at Space Fest this past weekend, I had to ask him about the tuna. It's since become my favorite little weird tidbit about Apollo 12 since I read the entire mission transcript from my live tweet a couple years ago. He said he had no memory whatsoever of tuna being involved in Apollo 12 at all. And so, of course, I obviously had to pull up my old blog post and show him the pieces of the transcript that I transcribed in the post. He read it and laughed so hard. He had no recollection that his question over this can of tuna that he really wanted to eat had caused so many problems. And he said, knowing himself, he probably actually had eaten the tuna and just not said anything about it to anyone. At these events, you often have people that come up and ask astronauts extremely technical questions about their missions or ask them for big, grand, sweeping statements about their flights to the moon. It's really, really fun to go up and ask them about minutia, but minutia about the human things, like eating tuna on the way to the moon. It was awesome to sit there with Dick Gordon and go through this old article and just talk to him about tuna fish and his feelings on tuna fish. <laughs> And of course, at Space Fest, you can't possibly be squatting on the floor next to someone who went to the moon, holding up to the laptop and laughing with them without multiple people taking pictures. My dear friend Mark Usiak took this picture of Dick and I going through this tuna issue looking at my computer, and the look on my face is a little bit hilarious. Mark showed the pictures to Dick, and he found me at a cocktail party that night and said, I saw those pictures, and the look in your eyes, I just said to Mark, 
boy, that girl is really mooning over me. And I looked at him and said, didn't I tell you that you're still just kind of a heartthrob? If you look at old pictures of Dick Gordon, he looks like Cary Grant. It's actually kind of amazing. At the time when Dick told me that, I was talking to Dee O'Hara, who was the astronaut's nurse, and she said that she had just had the conversation with Dick earlier, that she forgot just how handsome he was in the 60s. Seriously, these guys looked like old movie stars. It's amazing. So the moral of the story, NASA is very concerned with astronaut health in space, to the point where it took them almost 20 minutes to come to a solution about the tuna question. But if you're a rebel like Dick Gordon, just eat the food in space and just don't tell anyone about it. The other moral of the story, Dick Gordon is just awesome. Do you guys have other questions about Apollo 12, either about the human element or the science element? Leave me your questions and any comments in the comments below, and of course, ideas that you would like to see covered in future episodes. Be sure to follow me on Twitter for daily vintage space content, and with new videos going up every Friday, subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.